In today's video, I want to talk about the little known feature in hard ops called sharpen. Now, if I go into the Q menu here, you're going to see the sharpen feature. Sharpen is completely underutilized by most people. So I'm going to show you every single feature this thing does, how it's going to help you, and uh, exactly how to use each of them. Some of the topics in this video will be a little bit advanced. If it's too advanced for you, you should probably grab our accelerator course below in the description. It's going to teach you the basics of modeling, design, presentation, rendering, how to use all the modeling tools and things like that. So if this is too advanced for you, you're probably still in that beginner phase, in which case you can grab the accelerator program in the description below. So. First of all, in Blender, we have four different types of what are called sharps. And you don't have to overcomplicate what these are. You can call them whatever you want. But these are basically the four types of edge markings that you can have. So you can have seams. You can have actual sharps. And I'll explain all this in a second. You can have bevel weights and you can have creases. So these are the four different types of things that we can basically add to our edges for different types of workflows. So just jot that down, keep it in mind. Now what I'm going to do is go into the control tilde hard ops helper menu. I don't use this menu too much and you probably won't either, but if you go here to this sharpening and shading section, you're going to see four different features here. Again, you have crease, bevel weight, seam, and sharp. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. We're going to go uh, piece by piece basically. So if I turn these all off, and then I were to go in here, which has no markings on the edges right now, and I press Q and then sharpen, nothing's going to actually happen. Nothing's going to really change. However, what sharpen will do is it will basically work similar to auto smooth. It'll sharpen and, and add the um, you know edges, make them sharp, just the basic stuff. And I'll quickly show you because uh, it's going to be a bit confusing to explain. But if I were to go in here where we kind of have these you know flat edges here, I could press Q sharpen what that's going to do in hard ops is basically just give us that nice auto smooth effect there you can also change the angle here if you'd like i would just leave it on the default that's uh fine on the default in most cases so that's like the main feature of sharpen and that's what i see most people using it for and that's completely fine that's it's a very useful tool even if you're just doing something basic like that but nowadays you can just right click shade auto smooth you have a similar effect Sharpen is so much more powerful than just giving like an auto smooth effect, okay? So we're going to go back into the control tilde helper menu and we're going to go piece by piece, okay? If I were to just turn on the crease feature and I'm just going to shade this flat again. Now if I run the sharpen, it's still going to do that auto smooth effect. That still is going to stay, so don't worry about that. However, now the hard edges here are going to have a crease. So right here on the top and of course here on the bottom. And the reason it's not on these edges is pretty obvious. These edges aren't sharp. This one is a very sharp defined edge. So that's why that crease is appearing there on the top and on the bottom. Cool. So let's go back into the control tilde helper menu. Let's turn on bevel weight as well. So we'll have these two turned on. Now if I go ahead and sharpen this again. You're going to see now we have a bevel weight applied, but below the bevel weight, we still have the crease applied as well. It's just we can't display like multiple colors at once. But if I were to go in here and actually turn the mean bevel weight here to zero, we're still going to have the crease there. So don't worry about that. They're basically overlapping each other. We have a crease and we have a bevel weight. So at this point, you're probably getting the idea. If I go in here into the control tilde menu again and turn on seam, what do you think is going to happen? Well, we're going to have all three added to the hard edges. So sharpen. Now we have a seam. If I remove the seam, let's go into edge mode. If I right click clear seam, now we have the bevel weight. If I go in here and clear the bevel weights, we'll just do it in here all the way to zero. Same idea. Now we have the crease. And then if I remove the crease, we're left with nothing. Okay. And I know this is getting redundant, but what do you think is going to happen with all four? Well, we're going to have all four of those markings on here. Now, for whatever reason, seam is like the primary one that's displayed. But if I remove the seam, now we have the sharp, we have the bevel weight, we have all four applied to that hard edge. So you can keep all of these turned on if you want. Like 
sometimes it's going to help you, sometimes it's not going to really matter. It kind of depends. And sometimes you might actually want to turn these off. For example, if、um, you're using like a bevel weight workflow and you don't want to remark edges, you might want to actually turn that off. But in most cases, like for a general workflow, you'll probably just be dealing with like sharp only. You can just leave that on and you're going to be fine. So that's sharpen, and again, you can turn these off and on to your liking. We'll just press Q, sharpen, and、uh, everything's fine. Cool. So that's just the regular left click on sharpen. That is what sharpen does. Now, the next one is called C sharpen. So the original one we just used is called S sharpen. You don't really need to know the technicalities,、uh, it doesn't really matter. But the original one is called S sharp. And if you control click on sharpen, this one is called C sharp. So if we go in here, absolutely nothing is going to happen. And essentially, that's because C sharpen, to just keep it very simple, is simply going to apply any Boolean modifiers you have and simultaneously mark those edges from that Boolean modifier with sharps as well. Let me explain to you exactly what I mean. If I were to go in here with box cutter, so we'll turn on box cutter and maybe just run like an inset boolean, press the I key and then the T key and just do something like this, you're going to see this boolean is not actually applied, right? It's not real yet. I would have to apply it to actually get access to these edges here. So since this is not applied, me just clicking on sharpen. Is obviously not going to really affect these edges at all because they don't exist. So, what I could technically do is I could apply the Boolean. Now the edges exist. And then, just to get the sharps marked on those edges, I would just press Q, click on sharpen, and everything's fine. However, that's a two step process. I first had to apply the Boolean to make these edges real. And then I had to go in here and click on sharpen. C sharpen just does all of that in one go. So, if I undo this, Let's go back. You can see we have the Boolean. So instead of you know, doing this in two clicks, I can pr just press Q, control click on sharpen. It's going to apply the Boolean and simultaneously mark those edges with sharps. So that's a very easy situation in which you would use the C sharpen feature. And sometimes I even use that just to quickly apply Booleans. You don't necessarily need to use it for the edge markings, but sometimes if I'm just you know, running some Booleans here and there, And I'm like, okay, I just want to quickly apply it. I'll just control click on sharpen and just move on with my life. Because at that point, it's basically like running a smart apply, if you're familiar with that. So you can just use that for regular Booleans, and you can also use it to apply the Boolean and simultaneously mark those edges with the appropriate sharpening that you have selected here. So I hope that makes sense. Let's go to the next feature here. This one is the shift click on sharpen. All this does. Like, literally, all this does is it adjusts the angle of the auto smooth. Okay, don't overcomplicate it. So, let's say, for example, I went in here and I just moved. Okay, that's a little bit messy. Let me just get in here and control T, Alt J, control T, Alt J. Just the Boolean obviously made a bit of a mess. Cool. So, let's say I went in here and I just moved these edges down. Just like that. Now, obviously, right here, it's still going to be marked as sharp. Like, we're still going to have a sharp edge there because when I applied the sharpen originally, I had the sharp feature turned on, which basically forces Blender to display that edge、uh, with a you know, sharp effect. You can see the edge visibly right here. So, what I could do is I could go in here, right click, and then clear that sharp. And that's going to actually go away. And that's because the auto smooth angle is very, like, very light. We don't have much of an angle going on here. Now, if I move this up enough, you know, eventually it might catch just like that. But you know, right around here, the auto smooth isn't at the angle it needs to be to catch. So, what I could do is go in here to the modifiers panel, which is unfortunately now a modifier. The smooth by angle, I could just you know, adjust the angle here. And let's drop this. And just kind of move it until it catches the edge. So I could do that. Or what I could do is just press Q, shift click on sharpen, and then all I have to do is just move my mouse until that catches. So it's a little bit quicker than going in here. You can just kind of move your mouse 
to the left or right and just catch it manually. So that's what the shift click on sharpen does. Next one is alt clicking on sharpen. All this does is it applies a weighted normal modifier. That's it. So if I go in here, maybe add, you know, a bevel, right? We have some, you know, weird shading going on. So what I could do is I could add a weighted normal modifier here, which isn't a problem or what I could do. And by the way, if you do that manually in the modifiers panel, you would have to tick on this keep sharp feature. It's going to do this. But if you alt click on the sharpen feature, it's going to do that automatically using hard ops. So again, it's just a little bit of a quicker workflow. Q, alt click, you can add that way to normal. And, um, you know, there you go. Finally, let's discuss the final feature, which is called resharpen. So let's say, for example, I made some adjustments. I have, you know, all these edges here, you know, different edge markings, whatever. And what I wanted to do was go in here and maybe I just moved this down. Great. We still have, you know, the clean shading because we have our sharp there, right? And if I press Q and then click on sharpen, it's not going to really update anything. However, if I press Q and then control shift click on resharpen, it's going to actually update based off of that new angle for us. So that can be pretty useful as well. If you just want to quickly recalculate things uh, based on some modifications you made on the angles and things like that. Now I want to discuss one more internal setting here. I'm going to go and just sharpen this and you're going to see there's an option here for clean sharp. Now this should be kind of obvious what this does. Right now I have some edge markings. I have seams and whatever else. I'm going to go to sharpen. If I go to clean sharp, what do you think it's going to do? It's going to clean everything. It's going to unmark the sharps. It's going to undo the smoothing. It's just going to be back to, you know, the basics. So that can be useful as well if you just want to quickly, you know, undo any of that. So pretty easy. And you can also manually control which things will be removed. So for example, let's say I had, let's just sharpen this again. Let's say I didn't want to clear that seam. Okay, we'll go in here to clean sharp, turn off clear seam, and I'm still going to have the seam there. It's pretty basic. I don't really use that tool, but it can be useful sometimes. So that is, in my opinion, HardOps' most powerful feature. One more thing I want to show you is in edit mode, okay? So if you want to have more manual control over, you know, which edges are marked, which ones aren't, you're still going to use this control tilde menu. But if you go into edit mode, for example, you could actually like, you know, remove these individually or whatever. You could just remove the top only and then keep the bottom. You kind of get the idea. So let's say... I don't know, I, I went in here, right? I could go in here, right click, and I'm sorry, Q, mark, there we go. But we don't have sharp turned on, so we'll turn that on. And there we go, now we kind of have this one not marked. So you can have a little bit more control if you use this mark feature here in edit mode. So that's it, that is the sharpen feature inside of hard ops, practically every single thing you need to know about it. Most of the time, you're going to be using this to quickly add, you know, hard edges to the model while simultaneously smoothing any of the flat areas. And you're going to also use it to quickly add any of these sharpen features or to simply apply a Boolean by just control clicking on sharpen. Those are the main three situations where I'm using sharpen in like 99% of my workflow. So I hope this was useful to you. Hope you understand the sharpen tool now. A lot of people get very confused over it or simply don't use it to its fullest potential. So it should make sense now. If you're a beginner at Hard Surface, definitely grab our Hard Surface Accelerator program. However, if you're a bit used to Blender already, you might be better off getting our Hard Ops and Box Cutter program where we teach you every single tool inside of these add-ons, including how to develop your first project using these tools. And I'll link both of those programs in the description below, or you can simply head over to blenderbros.com and see what's over on our store. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.